Hello everybody, today we're going to be learning how to build a machine learning model from scratch. So what model are we going to be building? We're going to be building a very simple linear model that basically when it learns, it finds a coefficient that takes in an input, multiplies it by that coefficient and gets the output. So that's the model that we're going to be building. Um, I created some boilerplate before starting so that I didn't have to spend time writing it. Um, I created a data set struct, a training data and an evaluation data. Our training data, um, let's take a look at it and do some machine learn, like some human learning. So we have x equals zero, y equals zero, um, x equals one, y equals two, x equals three, y equals six, x equals four, y equals eight. I think we have the pattern. The pattern is basically multiplying by 2.0. So we know that, we humans deducted that pretty easily, but machines are are not that good at at learning these kinds of patterns just by themselves so we're going to be building a model that based on this data set tries to at, arrive at that 2.0 coefficient and make very accurate predictions over this really small data set so how will we start doing that um let's start by building out a, a model definition so let's i'm um, gonna just make it clonable and copyable and let's create a star uh, a struct called linear model our linear model will basically just have a coefficient which will be a floating point value called a in this case that's just the coefficient I, I wanted to name it and we have a right so that that's this is our model um we're gonna have to uh, to be able to predict using this model so let's create a function predict our function predict will take in a linear model and it will take an input value, right? So an F64. And it's gonna be returning the predicted value. How will we predict it? We'll take model.a and multiply it by the input. So now we have our model and we have a way to predict with that model. Amazing. Um, now to, to do some actual machine learning, we're gonna have to build something called the loss function. What the loss function is, is a single value that evaluates how good a model is. So basically, yeah, it's a way of determining if it's good or not. And what we're going to try to do is the closer that value is to zero, the better the model is. So we're going to try to go and try to find that minimum where it's as close to zero as possible. There are definitely many different loss functions. Um, one of them, and the one that I will be using for this video, is called an average of squares. So the average of squares basically squares all the differences and takes the average. So let's let's do it. So our loss function will need to take in a model and some data. So this data will be a data set, and it will return a single double. Let's start by defining our sum. So let's sum equals 0 0.0, sum equals 0 0.0. Then we're going to need a length. So length will equal data.x.length, for example, to get how many values we're going to be going over. Then we can loop from i to from 0 to, to length. We can have our prediction. So let prediction equals predict. And we're going to predict with our model. So we pass in model. And we're going to predict with data.x index, right? So there we have our prediction. Then um, we're going to need the actual value. So let actual, and this will just equal the, the value in our data set. Then we're going to sum the square. So prediction minus actual and to the power of two. There you go. At the end, we just return sum divided by the length and we're going to have to cast the length to a floating to a floating point value because it's currently an integer so we need to make that explicit cast and there you go we have a loss function now that we have a a, a predict a, a prediction function a loss function we're basically ready to start building the the training so in order to to build the training we're going to need a couple constants that constant will be, I'm going to move here just to make the make it easy to read. We're going to need a constant called delta. And what delta is, is that little triangle that we see on the definition of the derivative that basically means a really, really small number that approaches zero. 
since computers can't do calculus by themselves, we're going to need to specify an arbitrary, very small number that approaches zero. In this case, I'm going to go for 0 .00, um, 0 0.003. This could be another number. Just know that delta must be a, uh, a very small number. And then we're going to need something called a rate. So the rate or the rate of learning is basically how far along that slope we want to move on every iteration. So this number can be bigger, can be smaller. Just note that if it's very big, you might never find the local minimum because you're moving on very, very big steps. And if it's too small, it might take way too much to, to train our, our model. So I'm going to go for 0 0.005 which is a little bit bigger than the delta. Um, it's a small number, and I think it's going to be sufficient for this example. Amazing. So we're then going to need a, a model, right? So we've taken our linear model. And in this case, we're going to start with a random value for A. Why do we want a random value? Because if we take in an arbitrary number anywhere in the on the number space, right? We might never find um, a very good minimum. If it's random... And over many iterations, you might find a better local minimum than another. In this case, this is a very simple model, so this will not really matter for this model, but just know that some randomness is important. Amazing. Then we're going to need the current loss. So the current loss will be taking the loss of the current model, so that initial model, um, with respects to our training data. Amazing. Now we're going to do our training iterations, right? We're going to iterate many times and start training this model. So we're going to need a threshold. So let's create a, a const um, threshold, right? This is how you spell threshold, I think. <laughs> and let's set our a threshold initially to 0 0.1. So once our loss is smaller than 0 0.1, we stop training. We are satisfied with our result and yep. That, that's basically what we're doing. So we, while the current loss is greater than the threshold, then we're going to train. So how do we train? We first are going to need to take the derivative of the loss function. The derivative of the loss function with respect to what? In this case, to our coefficient, right? Because we're going to want to move that coefficient and try to find that coefficient where the loss function is as small as possible. So let's call it dA. So like the derivative in terms of A, which is our coefficient. And how do we calculate that? We basically need to take the loss function of a linear model that starts at the current model's A. So here we're going to need to specify A plus a very small delta, right? And then we're going to pass in with respect to the training data. And then we're going to subtract the current loss. And we're going to divide it by delta. There you go. This is the derivative of the loss function with respect to A at the current A value. Or at least very, very close since that delta is a very, very small number. Amazing. Now that we have this, we can um, move along the slope. How do we move along the slope? We can have model that a minus equals da times the rate, right? So we're going to be moving a little bit, a little bit, a little bit along that rate, uh, along that slope with um with the step of our rate. Amazing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need to update our current loss. So our current loss will now evaluate the model with the modified a value. And we're going to pass in the training data. Amazing. Now we have a trainable model. This is all that is needed for, for, for this model's training. Um, let's add some logging for our entertainment and um, evaluation purposes. So let's print out A and let's print out the loss on every iteration. So here we're going to take in model that A and we're going to print our current loss. Amazing. At the end, we're going to do a print of the um, loss with the evaluation data. And basically, I'm going to take in the loss of the current model with the evaluation data. Amazing. We are done. We finished. This program will train our model 
to try to find that coefficient that we we found as humans at the beginning the 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 model will like the training will try to train that model to to do that so we can do cargo run and as we can see we start at the random value of 0 0.87 and our loss is 26 and then we start moving 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 slowly across that that curve and we are as we can see we are slowly com like converging at 2.0 which is that coefficient we wanted to find. At the end, we found a loss with the evaluation data of 0 0.18, which is good, but it could be better, right? So let's make this threshold instead of 0 0.1, let's make it 0 0.001, right? So we make it way smaller and let's run this. Again, this is as this is way, way closer to 2.0, right? So it's on 1.994. It's very, very close to 2.0. And our loss with the evaluation data is now 0 0.001, right? So even with respect to our to our, our evaluation data, our model is doing really well. It has a very small loss function. And we could make this even even smaller and train it for, for a longer while. As you can see, it's now 1.997. So this is machine learning. Um, this is all we need to understand under the hood kind of what's going on in these models. We trained a very simple linear model to try to find the coefficient of a data set. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and see you on another time. Goodbye.